Hi everyone, hope you're keeping them well and safe in these trying times we're living in at the moment with this coronavirus. Here in the UK we're in lockdown like most other countries so there's not a great deal we can do at the moment uh, flying wise and what's a bit frustrating as well, the, the weather just recently has been really good. You know, you look out and you think, oh what a lovely day to go flying but we can't do it so better to be safe than sorry I suppose. So this video was supposed to be on the dead wing foam part four showing you the final build and the maiden flight so obviously that can't happen now so what i thought i'd do is show you what i'm doing during the lockdown period um, i've got quite a few things planned depending how long it lasts um, so i'm going to show you how far we've got with the wing i've got quite a bit of it uh, done but there's still some more to do but then what i'm going to do is also show you my do you have a mosquito which i crashed some time ago and it's been sat on the bench for a while so i finally got around to do, doing some repairs and i've used a lot of 3d printing on it as well to uh, get things sorted out and i'll explain all that in the next section i've got a couple of builds planned as well um, one's uh, something a little bit different and the other one is i've bought the plans for a, an f-18 uh, part flyer i've always liked the f-18 so uh, i'll just give you some details on that i've got a couple of videos planned um, so stick around to the end I'll explain what the videos are going to be uh, hopefully they'll be quite interesting and keep you a little bit entertained during this lockdown so let's start off by having a look at the mosquito first one I'm going to show you is my to have the mosquito um, some of you might have seen a video on the channel already uh, and I've had this quite a few years I think the maiden flight was in 2013 yeah. you know, doesn't seem that, that long ago really but time flies as you're getting on in years like I am a bit now so I'll put a video in showing you the maiden flight and I've got some build pictures on the website as well so I'll put your link into there as well so you can have a look as well um, it, this is one of the Tony Neehouse kits and this is the 47 inch mosquito uh, 47 inch wingspan and uh, I've always loved the mosquito um, I'm a bit of a warbird fan anyway so um, it's always one I wanted and uh, it went together really well and, and I got the, the the motors that were specified I did, I did toy with the idea of putting two small little IC motors in it which was an option then but um, in the end I went electric and um, I got the recommended motors from a company in the UK called Formax and um, these were the motors I recommended so these are uh, 2200 kV in runners and they're recommended with 6x4 props so I ordered that and fitted it and the and the maiden flight was a bit scary I'll, I'll drop you a little bit of video in it's not the best of videos it was I didn't have a particularly good camera back then um, but it was just give you an idea of what it was like and the launch was a bit scary but it went off alright and it, it didn't it flew okay actually um, then the second flight I had a one of the motors come loose and uh, and luckily I'd read about twins if you do lose a motor throttle back so you're not powering on the other motor and I managed to land it safely with no damage so I went through various things to try and fix it lock tight in the screws and the problem with these is that normally they have uh, on the uh, the engine plate there this would sit behind and the screws would go through there but there's not very much room there because um, they were plywood rings you couldn't really get a good bite on them so even though I locked tight at them and I even tried uh, you know I even tried making up different adapter plates with my CNC router um, and, and that worked to a point but again the same problem again the motors came loose again and uh, I just couldn't seem to get enough on the to hold the screws in and then what happened is on the um, I took it down one day to, to the field and uh, one of the uh, guys launched it for me because there's no undercarriage it's a hand launcher the launch was perfect but just at that point the motor uh, one of the motors came loose again and uh, it lost all power and just spun round into the uh, into the hedge which was unfortunate <laughs> um, and it did quite a bit of damage so I'll put you a picture up of the damage so you can see the damage and I was a little bit gutted and and uh, what's quite ironic though when you look on the Formax website because Formax lists all the recommended motors for Tony Neos kits 
and uh, they don't recommend these anymore. Yeah, I think yeah, I know why now. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with the motor; it's a good little motor, but it's just not right for this application. So, what they list now is a is a uh, an outrunner. I think this. I think these are 1150 kVs. These uh, new ones running eight by four props, or 1250k. I can't remember exactly. But these are the ones that are going in it now. And uh, but what I thought I'd better do is find a better way of mounting these motors. So uh, I'm quite into Fusion 360 as well. I do quite a lot on Fusion 360. Uh, if you see seen the um, the foam cutter that I've got details on the website. All the design for that was done in Fusion 360, uh, so I could test out if everything was going to fit properly. And uh, so it's absolutely brilliant for that. So I decided to have a go at designing some new engine mounts, and I went through a few different stages and different versions. So you can see I've tried different plates on the end, and then. So what I've eventually come up with is mounting the motor from the back. So, sort of like that. And then that goes in. Let's see, that goes in like that. <laughs> I need to screw these in the back really, but, but you get the idea that, so that then goes in like that and then that screws to the nacelles there. So, so I'm hoping that's going to cure the problem, but while I've been at it as well, um, I've decided to make some better uh, exhaust stacks and the so what I've done is I've actually made made these up. Let's see. Show them on this one as well. It took a little bit of doing and a bit of figuring out how to do it because you've got all these curves and that. And the, so these will now go on the go on the side now. We've got the right one, yeah. So they'll go on the side now. So uh, I think they'll look better. The original ones I had, the original ones I made up, I made up with some little bits of tube and balsa, which from a distance looked okay, but uh, I think these these look much nicer now, going up, going on the side like that. So that's one of the beauties of having a 3D printer. You can make all sorts with it and. I'm finding now that I'm not using my CNC router very much at all. Uh, I haven't, probably haven't used it for uh, probably 18 months now. And I use the 3D printer now. And this is one of the other things I printed off as well. Uh, for my Fockwall for 190, which just sat above us there. And that's uh, that was the first attempt at a spinner, which didn't work, but it's... I'll link you to a, a video of how I made a spinner. And that was on the old A8 printer, which I had before this, which was... Um, which was a good starter printer, but this CR10 V2 is, I'm really impressed with it. And, uh, you know, obviously a, a bit more money, but, you know, as I say, you pay your money and gets your choice. So, as you can see, there's still a fair bit more to do on it. Um, and if you notice, it's not any, the same colour as it was. I originally uh, had it painted in, you know, normal camouflage colours. The colours, um, I hadn't got the colours anymore and they were quite difficult to get hold of. Um, uh, I think I had to order them specially to get the right colours and I thought, well, I'm not going to do that again. So I've decided to paint her as a photo reconnaissance mosquito. And um, I like the evasion stripes on models. I don't know. Some people don't like it, but I quite like them. So I've still got decals to do yet. And I've just ordered um, a vinyl cutter. I've been thinking about getting one for some time. So I've decided... Uh, while we're in this lockdown period, it's a good time to learn how to use one. Not sure where I'm going to put it yet, because as you can see in here, I haven't got a great deal of space. It's all full up. 
wife keeps saying to me I've got too much stuff <laughs> but you can never you never have too much stuff can you so I'll be making some decals out out for this now and, and hopefully the other planes I've done decals before using um, water slide and uh, inkjet um, printers um, and they work okay but they're not quite as uh, you've got to be careful on the colour you put them on because sometimes they can, you know, they, they can almost look a little bit see-through. So, still a bit more to do. I've got to get her all rigged up again because the speed controllers are out and everything and get the motors fitted in. But hopefully, once we come out of this lockdown, uh, we'll be ready to go flying again. Right, so as you're seeing from the pictures, um, this is as far as we've got with the wing. And as you can see, I've covered in brown paper. Uh, my favourite covering method is, again, and it's incredibly strong. You know, so all it's got is some carbon spars in there, which you'll have seen on the pictures. And then we've got a plywood mount for the motor there. But what you may have noticed is I've added this extra part on the front, and this is to um give me a bit more room up front for the battery because i thought the battery was going to struggle to get right up close to the front and that might cause some cg issues so uh with the motor being on the back there and sometimes when they're a bit close they can be a bit noisy so uh so that's a, again a 3d printed mount <laughs> which is a uh, which i printed on a new printer which and then it's going to have um gps in it as well so i've took the original um gps module i had and just took it out of the casing and then found this on thingiverse this little um uh tray so that fits in that fits in really well and the gps will plug in so that will sit in there servos are in metal geared servos and then what i'm going to be using is um inav on here and i'm going to be using the this is an omnibus f4 flight controller and with a spectrum satellite receiver so and that plugs straight into the uh you can see that one there that plugs straight into the inav so uh so that, so that's where we are with the wing and then we're going to be using this 2200 kv motor with a six by four prop on the back so I've still got some end plates to make yet for it. And then what I'm going to be doing with it is um, she's quite smooth now. But I'll give her a coat of this uh, sanding sealer. Um, and that gives it a really hard finish. And I can paint it with whatever you like. The front portion there is some of the pink foam. And I've covered that in some poly C which you may have seen me use on my T45 Goshawk. So that's just got a little bit of um, thin um, fiberglass on there and then poly C and that just makes it a lot, a lot harder there. So up the front, I'm probably going to be sticking a, um, a camera and a, a VTX. And if the balance isn't right, what I'm going to do as well is use, I've got one of these cheaper got this Asaco camera and I'll probably if I find I need weight at the front I'll probably try and get that in somehow I don't really want to risk me GoPros on this and uh, so that that's where we are with the flying wing um, so I just need to get it the reason it's stalled a bit at the moment because I've run out of covering materials so I'm undecided what covering to put on it yet I don't know whether to paint it or cover it so um, but my local model shop has closed down and uh, and they do give us the uh, flying club a little bit of discount as well not that it makes not that that's the reason for going but you just can't go out and get stuff anyway so so hopefully we'll get that finished for when we come out of the lockdown and give that a maiden flight and see how she goes yeah, so the other thing i'm going to be doing as well is doing another part jet and uh, around about Christmas time, FRC Foamies, and I think they're doing it now through the coronavirus, they, 
a lot of these plans are half price. So I actually got the F18 plan. And uh, so I've got the motors and everything for that. So, uh, and I've got quite a few sheets Depron left as well. So I'm going to be doing the uh, uh, the F18. Uh, there's a real good guy in Canada called uh, uh, Scott. He's got a channel um, all, all about park jets, and he's got some real good videos on the F18. And uh, so his park jets uh, are awesome. They they're really fast, and it's sort of what inspired me to get back into park jets again after seeing some videos on his channel. So so that's something else we'll be doing as well. So when we come out of this lockdown period, then they'll all be stacked up ready for uh, maiden flights, hopefully. So videos I've got planned for the lockdown. Um, I've got about three I'm going to do, uh, depending how long the lockdown goes on. And the first one I'm going to do is um, what I've noticed since the lockdown. I've been getting quite a lot of questions from people. Um, a lot of people have been downloading the the ebook and the plans. And uh, thank very much if you uh, pay for the plans. But I've noticed a, a big increase in the downloads, and so, and because of that, I'm getting quite a lot of questions as well. And quite a lot of the questions are all very similar. So I thought what I'd do is I'd put together a video with the common questions I'll get. If there's anything you'd, you'd like to know, you don't think's been covered in the ebook or uh, on any of the videos, just drop them in the comments and I'll collate them all together and I'll produce another video, uh, hopefully fairly soon. Um, I've got about 15 questions already. So if there's anything else you can think of, just put them in. It doesn't just have to be on the phone cut. It can be anything about the channel or any of you I mean, if you want a bit of history how I ended up doing phone cutting then I can, I can go into that as well so so that's one video um, the other video I'm going to do is the hopefully get around to doing the video on dev CNC foam which is the alternative to using the uh, firmware the free firmware um, it's got a few advantages as well so it's um, it's 60 euros which I don't think is a massive amount and uh, it, it is really good I'm, I'm quite impressed with it and then probably the the other video, if we carry on with this lockdown, which I'll probably do anyway, you know, in or out of the lockdown, is on the new vinyl cutter, which you've probably seen a few pictures of earlier. So I bought the Cameo uh, 4, the, the Silhouette Cameo 4. Um, I did quite a bit of research and um, I'd, I've got a sort of a limited space, so I couldn't get one of these, these big 28 inch um, vinyl cutters. And... Um, the thing that swayed me for the cameo really was the software and from sort of all my experience of doing uh, CNC and software that, that the software is probably the most important part because if you haven't got the software to use it the, you know the machine's pretty useless and uh, and I from the videos I looked at the Silhouette, Silhouette Studio software seems to be better for what I'm wanting to do to you know to produce decals and stickers for for the planes and that so, so that's probably going to be the third one so that sort of brings us to the end of the uh, video, really. Um, thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you're all going to keep safe and well, and we can come out of this soon and get back to flying. Um, please like and subscribe and share, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video, and hopefully the next one we might be having some flying. So thanks for watching, guys.